Back on Sports 225, I'm Lee Feinswag visiting with Major League Baseball player and two-time World Series champion Ryan Terrio, who, he knows this, but he's one of my favorite guys, and we, we, I've known him, uh, I don't think I knew you in high school, but certainly from when you played at LSU. And what I like about Ryan is that he not only has a great sense of humor, but uh, he's direct and to the point, and uh, you, know, you, ha you have that edge to you that I really like, and I think that's one of the things that makes you a, a really good athlete as well. Yeah, you know? confidence. You? No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's blunt like a train wreck sometimes. Yeah, well. Okay, so that's a good setup. Mm -hmm. So last May, I'm in uh, L.A., and I'm out there for different things, but I make a point of getting a credential to the Dodgers because they are playing host to the San Francisco Giants. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to write a column for BayouBengalsInsider.com about Ryan Terrio. Ryan Terrio doesn't know this. So I park my car uh, way up top there at uh, the stadium is just a magnificent view yeah. from the top of Dodger Stadium. You look out, you see the valley on one side, downtown LA on the other. It's mm. just fantastic. It was 70 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Yep. So you go and then you take the elevator like eight stories down to the clubhouse level. And I walk into the Giants clubhouse and there's this couch and there's, and, and there's a TV set. And I look down and Terrio is laying there watching TV. And that's about you know four o'clock Pacific time. So it's still three hours before the game. And I looked down at him, he looks up at me, and he goes, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and I said, I'm here to see you. And he goes, no, seriously, why are you here? And I said, well, I'm out in L.A., and I figured I'd drop by and we'd do a column. He said, I said you know, you didn't text me. And, why, you know, and, and I, he goes, you didn't text me back. And he goes, what do you mean? So, you know, you, go, you, know, you changed your phone number, right. this or that. He's always got some text BS, you know. So it was just so funny. So we went and we sat outside on that bench. Mm -hmm. And was that, I mean, we sat for maybe a half an hour. Yep. In the most, I mean, it was just so beautiful Could inside that stadium. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they yeah. only didn't have that baseball game to play. Right, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> the tradition there is unbelievable, man. The weather, you see all the the uh, movie stars during the games over there. Um, the the former Dodger greats go back to every game. Uh, uh, just a great stadium. I mean, wonderful atmosphere, no doubt about it. Now, from the first to the third inning, there's nobody in the stands. Nobody shows up. Then from like the third inning to the seventh, the place is packed. Then from the seventh to the ninth, everybody's gone. <laughs> and that's basically how it works. <laughs> LA is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, I love going there. I could never live there. All right, so at the time, you remember some of the things for our conversation were interesting. It was still early in the season, so it was early May. Mm -hmm. And I remember you specifically saying to me, you know, I said, well, you're not getting to play much. And you said, yeah, you, these guys don't know me yet. And you were hurt a little bit in yeah. the preseason. And you said, and, and, I, and we both agreed that eventually you would settle in and you'd be in the lineup. I want to say I went on a deal maybe a week after that. Too. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, it was funny. I told Ryan, I said, you know, Ryan, I only root now for the teams where I know guys. The teams themselves don't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I said, so I'm rooting for the Braves because of Chad Durbin. And mm -hmm. I'm rooting for the Giants because of Ryan Terrio. Mm -hmm. And I remember you said, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> so... Correct me if I if I take this you know in the right direction. So eventually they anchored you at second base. Yeah, you know I, I was dealing with some uh, some flexor tendon issues in my mm -hmm. elbow, and I'd, I'd never been hurt before. Uh, kind of scared to get an MRI because I didn't want to, them to find anything bad. But uh, yeah, they they found some stuff in there that wasn't working right, and uh, ended up going on the DL. Was never 100% healthy, you know, from spring training, beginning of spring training uh, until after after coming off the DL, and then about two weeks after I came off, it came back again. And, and especially, you didn't want to be like perceived as yeah. a weak guy on a new right. team, right? Yeah. And uh, and you know what I did was just kind of gutted it out. Mm -hmm. um, I'd never been on the DL before in my career, so that was kind of a big deal to me. And I did not want to go on the DL, but you know, truth be told, I was not playing up to my potential. And then you know, I knew that just being honest with myself. And and let me let me point out too, this is a guy who a few years back led the National League in base hits for shortstops. Mm -hmm. You know, when you were with the Cubs. Yeah. So I know. Yeah, and so. Uh, Started to feel a little bit better, and then I had about a three-month stretch there where, where uh, really hit the ball well. But Got, then, but then, but then the trade came, and I know. Uh, you know it was weird because uh, I was really hitting my stride, getting right, right close to 300. No, you were playing good, and uh, yeah, stealing bases again, um, up there. You know, looking looking at uh, a really solid season. Um, we got Marco in a trade right at the break, uh, Scudero, right, and. Uh, you know, it doesn't make me feel that bad because come to find out, he had the most hits of any player in the National League from the All-Star break on. 
Right. <laughs> you know, that's pretty good players in the National League. So that makes yeah. me feel a little bit better. Yeah, because the Giants went and acquired Marco Scudero, who just absolutely had an, an unbelievable Phenomenal. season. I mean, it was the pinnacle of his athletic career no the doubt last about three it. or four months in, mm. in the playoffs yeah. and all that goes with it. And um, this is the lesson, though, that gets lost to everybody in sports, whether it's youth football to college basketball mm. to a Major League Baseball season. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Hundred percent. Could you know you were you were buried for a while? Oh yeah. I mean, there would be long stretches because I every morning the first thing I do is if I if I haven't watched the game, I check and see how all the guys are doing, especially Ryan. I go, she's Ryan didn't play again. Yeah. Oh geez. And to fast forward to being the guy who scores mm -hmm. the game-winning run in the World Series, which had to be the the greatest moment in the history of your professional career. Yeah. And if it wasn't, I'd like to know whatever ones would be close. Yeah. But could you give me the pose? The, the, uh, that one? I, <laughs> he scores the run. I had a headache for three days after this vein shooting out of my neck. <laughs> it was, I, I was definitely not planned. I mean, I was nervous to death out at second base. Like, don't get picked off. Whatever you do, you know, don't get picked off. Don't get thrown out. Oh, man, unbelievable. Uh, but, you know, to touch on what you just said, Lee, I mean, that's a great point. You know, the ultimate goal in, in sports, uh, professional sports, really, for us, um, you know, is to win a championship, is to win a ring. And, and, you know, so this is the ultimate goal. Now, do you want to contribute on a daily basis? Uh, of course. Uh, but, you know, um, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. You know, so to be able to bite the bullet and just know where your role is at that point in time, to be a good teammate, a good person, a good player, uh, you know, is important. Um, I, I knew my role and knew what I was supposed to do. And, and uh, you know, it turned out that, that everything worked out great. And at the end, I was the guy that was scoring the winning run. You know, they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, I, I can't be the squeaky wheel. You know, I'm, I'm going to sit there and be the guy that, uh, you know, that I've always been, um, you know, the person that my parents raised and, and be a good guy and a good teammate. You hear a lot, and this expression you hear it in all sports, they call him a good clubhouse guy, and you hear or bad clubhouse guy, and yeah. it's it's a baseball reference, but it applies to all sports. But you don't last this long in the major leagues or in baseball in particular. Mm -hmm. And and now that you're on the, you know, you probably uh, would be considered middle age now. Oh yeah, oh, no <laughs> doubt. I go mean, these guys are like, oh, here comes the old guy. <laughs> whoa, 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 old Were you the oldest guy on the team on the Giants? No, no, not by far. Heck, Marco was 38. Really? He was, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I wasn't the oldest guy. But, you know, it's funny because in St. Louis, I was like a spring chicken, dude. Then I go to San Francisco, yeah. and, uh, and that was a younger team. And now, you know, you're a you know, veteran. You well, know? This, that was one of the things we talked about that day in May was how you were the, uh, right. the wise seasoned veteran. Mm -hmm. And, in fact, I think that was the approach I took in the column was mm -hmm. that, you know, he's, mm -hmm. he's the, sage, the sage old veteran. Yeah. So, anyway, before let's, let's uh, take a break, and we'll go one more segment if it's okay with you. Yeah. But you're on, you're on second base. You're, you're on your way home. What, what are you thinking? Don't miss third. Just run as fast as you can, or just like, or is it? Do you not think of the moment? Just it's baseball. It's baseball. It's repetitive. You've done it a thousand times. Uh, you pick up the third base coach, and then go. You know, see what he's telling you to do, and then go. You know, and Flan, our third base coach, is jumping around like a moron and like <laughs> running down third base line with me. He's known for like going all the way to home plate with you. But uh, you know, it was the strangest thing because when I slid in, I knew I was going to be safe. Right. About halfway. Um, I probably didn't even need to slide, but when I slid in, you listen for the roar of the crowd, you know, because you know what you just did. And this thing's over. You know, these guys are done. They're swept. We just won the World Series. You know, I just won it again. So you know the significance of what just happened, and the crowd is deathly silent. You could have heard a pin drop because we were in Detroit. All right. And it was freezing cold. It was raining. The people were pissed and you know it was just like they didn't want to be there that they knew what was going to happen the inevitable was coming so i get up and i'm waiting for the crowd to roar and nothing happens <laughs> it's it should be incredible yeah I'm like <laughs> wait a minute so i screamed like an idiot you know? oh it was awesome it was but, awesome uh, and it'd be still out of what you still had to sweat out the bottom half of the inning i did yeah. and but you know sergio had been great yeah we knew what was going to happen you know the, the coolest part about that whole scene was going in the dugout after you know, and seeing the, the expressions on the faces of all my teammates. And, uh, you know, they knew what I had been through last year. You know, they knew that I was playing well. I mean, everybody, everybody knew that. And, and uh, they knew the circumstances that I was, that I was going through. And, and uh, on multiple occasions had guys come up to me and say, man, the way you're handling this is, I don't know if I can do it. Um, which I didn't think it was anything, any big deal. I mean, it was just the way it was at that point in yeah. time, you know. And, and 
truth be told, I'm fortunate, and I've always been fortunate just to be in the situation I've been in. And I know that. I don't ever think I'm owed anything, period. You know, so, um, you know, it is what it is. It all worked out great. And I appreciate you being here telling us those stories. Ryan Terrio, I'm Lee Feinswag at Sports 225. We get back, we'll talk about uh, maybe 2013. We'll see you in a minute.